Brilliant, we are live. Good morning, welcome to today's RC coffee chat. And you're gonna have to excuse me if I sit uh, huddling around the warm cup of coffee or the black gold because I am absolutely freezing. It's colder than witch's wingtip here this morning. Uh, it's not very nice. It's about minus two, probably a little bit more out there. The cars are frozen solid. Now I do need to flip the other screen uh, to the left hand side just to make sure that you can hear me nice and loud and clearly. Now I'm assuming that's going to happen, that's going to be the case so on to today's topics and I have literally just two topics for today's RC coffee chat and one of them is quite contentious uh, and that is the vote which we ran yesterday uh, between IC or electric. Now those of you which are joining in with the live chat uh, on the left hand side um, please uh, do share your views with uh, the IC versus electric um, conversation. I'm not, I'm not going to say which side of the camp you sit in. Uh, for this, you either like IC or you like electric. Or, as by the looks of it, a fair majority of you uh, have a mixture of both. Uh, and the other topic which we're going to cover is the Clouds XUAV and her build progress as well because I've just run into challenge after challenge uh, just getting this one built. And my, my, my personal goal is to get this one uh, ready for Friday. So I'm discovering stuff as I go along. And I've, as many of you know, uh, I've been posting mini updates uh, in the Facebook group as well. Jeff is in the house as well. So a quick shout out, a good morning to Joe, Rick, Alan. Oh, there's some bloke called Matt Ogborn in here. Nuno, uh, Alan. Brutus the Ugly, Jeff's in here, and one old goat, which can hear us loud and clear in Ohio. Now, those of you which can make the live chat, please don't feel uh, left out. Uh, remember, you can always ask any, com uh, any questions or post your comments in the comments section underneath this video. So with that said, let's get into today's first topic, which is IC or electric. Now, before we actually get into the vote, is that we've got two sides of the camp here, haven't we? Which is that electric with brushed motors really was not a great power option. Again, lipos weren't around, uh, they're relatively new-ish, uh, and they, we, they just didn't have like the power density. You would have to use, the, what was it, the nickel metal hydride or NICADs uh, to power uh, a model airplane and of course they are while very stable uh, uh, they are just not very power dense which doesn't suit oh and they're also very heavy as well it doesn't really suit a model aircraft so in the recent years and I must say that it for the better personally uh, is that electric really has taken off with the combination of uh, lipo batteries and um, uh, greater efficiency uh, brushless motors as well. Whereas the, on the flip side is that I see, um, for, I know for many of you, and I, I think I may have biased the vote yesterday uh, in there, with, if I say on which side of the camp I was going to sit on, uh, so apologies for that, uh, is that on a, on a very serious point, I know for many of you, when, when it comes to I see models, it is the whole like experience with the engine. It's the smoke. It's the noise. It's the uh, it's the whole piece going together, just like a real aircraft. And I can understand those with um, military backgrounds. I know up at one of the flying clubs, there is a heavy bias there uh, from uh, the RAF, for example. Uh, and for them, it's a no-brainer. Why would they fly electric engines all the way? And some of you are just complete motorheads as well. Uh, and just drink, have a little top-up of uh, nitro uh, in your coffee every morning, you know? Uh, it's just the way it is. Now, I'm not saying either side is bad. I'm saying both sides have positives to them. Um, but for me, personally, uh, is that coming back into this hobby many, many years later... Um, is that I was frankly shocked on how cheap things have got and how simple things are now with LiPo battery packs and the electric side of the hobby. It's plug and go. You really can't make many mistakes. 
Uh, and the only issues which I've really had with the electric side of the hobby uh, is either been like a dry solder joint, um, and that's been about it. It's really straightforward. Um, it really has been super straightforward. It's very, very simple to pick up. And yes, I do have an electronics background, so it is, does feel kind of like straightforward to me. Um, but it is like no there's, there's no fuss, there's no mess. But on the flip side, the flight times are, are lower. Uh, whereas there's an IC aircraft, you can go up, fly for 10, 15, 20 minutes, so maybe longer, uh, depending on how hard you're ragging it. Uh, and bring it back down, put some more fuel in it, start it, and off you go. Whereas for me, uh, Phil up at one of the flying clubs and nicknamed me uh, another battery map because they go up, fly the bonsai to its death, uh, wait for it to fall out the sky, and then go back and then stick another battery in it and do that a dozen times. Why wouldn't you? It's great fun. Great fun. Uh, so I am just checking the chat in the left hand side. Uh, good morning, Marco. I can't smell that coffee. Sorry, I'll move it closer to the microphone for you. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so that was the topic. If you haven't voted yet on the poll for IC versus electric, it's over in the Facebook group. And also do go and take the time uh, to read what other po uh, people's points of view uh, is on uh, this, there is, no, I'm not going to say two sides of the hobby, just two parts of the hobby. Um, well, overwhelmingly, Electric has won the vote uh, in there, and I know the one person who uh, clicked on IC, I'm not going to point them out, but I would also like to say very well done on sitting yourself firmly in that camp against the trend of what was going on, going on in there. So, yeah. Very curious, curious. And again, if you if you're watching the recorded version of this one, do let us know what your view is. Um, do you just fly electric, or do you just fly IC, uh, or do you fly a combination of both? Do you have some models, and maybe you've got some IC models? Do you fly them as much as your electric models? I don't know. Let us know. Uh, and if you're in the live chat, you can see that at the top of the screen, uh, or uh, let us know down in the comments section uh, as well. Yeah, Jeff's just wrote it in there, I don't need to be an engine mechanic as well. <laughs> and that was always one of my bugbears as well, as I was remember my dad trying to just fiddle around, trying to get the uh, mix right as well. And again, you have to wear any new engine and things like that. There were specific challenges around it too. So anyway, that was yesterday's poll in the Facebook group. On to the second topic for today. And remember, there are only two topics for today's RC Coffee Chat. Uh, is the X UAV clouds. Now, I did write quite a long post in the Facebook group, yet, the group yesterday, and that is what we're going to cover today. Now, uh, I'm going to just use the Facebook post as a reference. So, number one uh, is that we are making really good progress with the clouds. Um, she is actually over there on the workbench, all set up. I do need to go back over the laminate again. I can see there's a few milky spots on there. Uh, so she will get one uh, extra iron over uh, and I do need to get onto Hobby King and order so a couple of different parts but some of those is some color covering film as well. Uh, we've done the back the uh, V-tail is black fins uh, but I don't have enough to put an ink out on the wingtip so probably I would like to both the wingtip sections in black uh, as well just to help with orientation uh, in the sky when we bring her in line of sight or uh, just for a maiden and so on and so forth. Now, uh, many of you may have seen me pop up a photograph, uh, a couple, well, yesterday actually in the Facebook group, uh, I think it was yesterday morning, see if I can find. Yeah, the clouds has the potential to run that much battery. Uh, the bay in the clouds is absolutely enormous, and uh, just for the record, you would most likely be able to fit, be able to fit four 5200 forest packs in that model. They will physically fit, almost physically fit, uh, in the whole of the uh, clouds. Uh, I say physically, you get another, you get four there, uh, and you get another two there, and you can potentially squeeze another one in the middle. Um, yeah, the, as you can tell, the uh, hold area on the clouds XUAV uh, is huge. But that is a massive challenge. Now, let me just go and 
point. Let's see if I can find a better photo for you. Uh, yeah, let's use that one there as a reference. So the CG line is that if you'll notice on the back of uh, this motor mount, there's actually, you can't see it, but there's a hole either side. Uh, and that is where the CG line is. Now, the issue which I'm run into is because this model is so, sh it's basically short held, which we'll see better in that photograph. Let me move that over there so you can see it on the screen. It's because this tail section is just far too short. Uh, it could basically, we need another six inches on the tail section uh, because, oh, look, there's the holes there. That's roughly where the CG line is. Uh, so that any of this extra payload capacity in the front is when I put the batteries in and check in the CFG point, I'm having to put the battery in the middle section uh, about there. Uh, or like almost or just in front of the CG line, which means that uh, a good like 50% of the payload capacity area is just being wasted with thin air. Um, so maybe that's an over, uh, oversight on this actual model. It really could do with an extra six inches on its tail uh, to help balance it out. And do think for a moment, I've, so let me, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to zoom in. No, you, you can't really see it, but remember this is a, let me turn it around that way. Uh, this is a twin motor model. Uh, so don't forget, we've got two huge, great big cans of copper wire uh, up on the front. So we're already quite well front loaded as it is. Uh, so yeah, it is proving to be a little bit of a challenge. I will make a full blown overview episode on the CloudX UAV at the end because, and I'm, I am holding back on with um, like final judgments until we get it to fly because any challenges which I'm having right now with the clouds are hopefully counteracted by her gracefulness and flight efficiency. Yeah, yeah, it's. I'm just looking at your chat on there. A tail pusher, yeah, that's what the mini talon was a tail pusher. It needed the weight the the back of there. So uh, just looking at my notes here in the background, yeah, we're wasting at least 50% of her payload capacity uh, because we just don't have the weight in the tail. We've just got too much weight at the front. Those two great big cams, the 2814, uh, they're like 35, 36 motors on the front. They're huge uh, with 11 by seven props. So we've already got a fair amount of weight at the front as well. Uh, so yeah, oh, I'm also taking the time. I will, there's two compartments on the vet uh, on the clouds, this photograph is probably a better one to show you, uh, is that you've got the main hole there, and I'm just looking up on the other screen so you can see it, and then you've got this compartment, uh, so that's still the hole there, and then you've got this extra compartment here. So I am what putting all the wires around to put the vector in this section here, just to get a few grams at the back of the model, you know? And to be brutally honest, there is this great big hole at the back of the model, which, I don't actually have a photograph for you. You'll have to take my word for it. Uh, these two plastic joiners here, uh, there is a hole. Why XUAV didn't include a piece of foam uh, to go in there or something else, I genuinely don't know. Uh, it's not the hole for the parachute. That's the bay which is underneath here. Um, I don't know. And I know Aero FPV, which we mentioned yesterday, had exactly the same issue as well. Uh, and my point being about the hole at the back, I am seriously considering sticking some lead in the tail just to give me a little bit more wiggle room around here at the front so I don't have to have the battery like here. I can bring it forwards a bit and I can then I've got some play room down here for all the wiring and things like that as well. So uh, it is a bit odd in that respect. That said, I could thinking about it aloud, uh, is sticker like a 3S LiPo in the tail, so it's not just dead weight, it's usable weight, uh, and then use the 3S LiPo uh, for maybe the lighting on the back. Oh, that's not a bad idea, Matt. I will see if I can put a uh, 1.3 3S uh, LiPo in the tail, uh, then it is dead, then it's, it is weight in the tail, I get the benefit from that, uh, and then on the flip side, uh, and then I get a separate power source to do the uh, lighting inside, and it doesn't detract from the main LiPo pack or packs which I'm using. I like these RC coffee chats. We come up with some good ideas. Apologies for that. Um, Marcus says, can you pile the batteries two by two? Yes, uh, flight time estimate of approximately one week 
in the sky with 20,000 milliamp feet hours. Again, you'll probably be going to be cruising around about. My personal goal is between 6 to 7 amps. So you work that out on a 5200 pack. Nuts. Uh, crazy. It uh, looks like we have Johnny in the house as well. Yay. Happy days. Johnny, welcome aboard. Sorry, we are not chatting about Team Legit Wings. Uh, we will get a mention of me looking forward to the 48 in a few moments' time, I can assure you. Uh, so, and that's me looking at the chat, which you can see at the top as well. So, CFG, pain in the ass. Need to work around it. Think I've just been and worked out my solution to that uh, by just chatting to you. So, for those of you which have joined us, thank you very much. That's a uh, good idea, Matt. Well done. Uh, the other one is the accessories are oh, the best control horns I have ever had. They are huge. Look at the size of that. They're like, they're over three centimeters big. Honestly, they have all the models I've had. They have been the best control horns, but we were grossly let down by the supporting hardware. Uh, I don't know if you can see, let me move. Oh, I know you can't see it. Sorry, my head's in the way. In fact, why don't I click that. Bye. <laughs> right, as you can see on there, uh, yeah, that screw or those screws, utter bloody rubbish, utter crap. And they broke off and you'll see the burn mark in there. I couldn't get that end out. I was using a pair of pliers and trying to twist it out. Uh, and then, um, mm. where is it? My new toy in the office. How cool is that? Brilliant. So I heated up a metal bar and burnt it out. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. So I now have great mistrust in the two, which I did in the VTEL at the back. So uh, potentially the best hardware, well, plastic control horns I've ever had. The screws and the other parts which came with it, utter rubbish. Uh, so we went through the boxes, found some decent, I had some extended servo screws. Uh, they were brilliant. So they were perfect for it. So bit of a challenge around that. Uh, yeah. I may take the ball joints off the um, VTEL at the back because now having seen two of those screws break, well, it was just the first one which I posted on Facebook, but the other one broke as well. Uh, I may go back to the tail fin um, and take the two screws out and then move to those little ones with a little bug screw in them and do those instead. Um, uh, Alan, uh, could you put one of the four, and I'm just looking at your comments, and apologies, I am trying to keep an eye on the comments and cover today's topic at the same time. So Alan, that is a very good question. Could you put one of the four S's in the back? Uh, probably is the answer to that. But we then end up with, because you'd have to go in the um, parachute bay that has a door which wants to drop downwards in it. Um, so... Yeah, and I, I don't think, actually think it allowed, it probably wouldn't fit, but I do like your thinking. Uh, and to be honest, I think the route which I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go and put a 1.33S battery uh, in the boot, in the right by the uh, uh, VTEL at the back, uh, and then just run a little power line in with a back, uh, and then run that up, and then we can power the light in uh, off the top of that. Cause I do wanna put at least two strobes on it, and I shamelessly, uh, Aero FPV put some LED light strip on the back, and I really like it, so I, I'm just gonna copy it. Straightforward says that. Uh, the wiring looms is been a good challenge. Let me grab that photo, and I need to turn myself off for that. So let me zoom down. Uh, just so we get our orientation, the nose is down here at the bottom. We've got the two power lines coming across. Uh, what I did there was that I worked out the length of this cable, or these two cables coming in, uh, and then what I did is that with the other two cables from the other motor uh, is that I rolled it with a knife, cut it out, and then made a, like a hole in the middle between the wires, then tucked the wires in, uh, and then soldered them up. Now I did also include uh, two JST uh, connectors. Now a little tip for you is that I almost, and I say almost, used servo connectors for the power lines, and then the sudden... Not, not epiphany, uh, the realization 
the, the chances of me screwing it up and powering something straight into mains, well, in this case, uh, 4S power uh, into a servo connector uh, would be a stark reality. Uh, so that I literally just ripped my office apart this uh, last night, yeah, trying to find some JST connectors. So I will be using JST connectors just so it's map proof on the flight line that I don't stuff in or mash in uh, a servo connector into a JS into potentially straight into 4S. That would just fuck the whole system. And um, there's, yeah, there's no other words for that. It would not be a happy day uh, for that. So put two little connectors on there. Also, have I got a decent photo on the side? Yes. That one there, and again, I need to turn my head off on this one. There we go. Uh, so that's the back of the bay. I've got a six volt back, uh, which is sat in there. Oh, I don't know if you can really see that there, but there's uh, cable tie connectors with little um, sticky back plastic on the back. And I've, I've been using those uh, throughout the fuselage. I've done it on the mini Talon as well. And it then means that I can cable tie wires to the side uh, of the model. So we end up with a super, super clean build. And look, there's one down there. Uh, and it means that and um, this also, let me just zoom out a moment, uh, this side of the model, so the right hand side of the model uh, is going to be all power lines. Okay, so I'm putting the power lines on the right hand side of the model. Whereas that on the left hand side of the model, uh, that's where I'll have all the AV equipment. So that's where I will have, and servos by the way, that's where I'll have the servos running out, that's where I'll have the FPV uh, lines going out to the video transmitter and also onto the FPV camera to try and keep the two noisy compartments uh, on either side. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, I've just read your comment there. Uh, just, uh, yeah, just jettison the battery uh, once it, it's flat. Not a bad idea. You can have A, stick the bat uh, parachute on top of the battery uh, and then just let it float on down. I like your thinking. That's, um, yeah. Yeah, further two plus two in the rear. Yeah. <laughs> and then once you've spent them, just jettison them out of the way. Not too sure what that would happen, what that would do to the CG. Um, but I do like your thinking. And that parachute bay is huge. Um, you could fit a small can of, or you fit a can of Diet Coke in there, or a can of Coke in there, and be able to adjust us in that out during the flight. That would be, uh, uh, be amusing. Uh, so anyway, coming back on to topic, we, yeah, I will be running the servos on six volts, uh, and I will also be running a redundant power supply across to the vector as well, just because I'm paranoid. Um, because it's only one extra wire and I've got five volts rattling around in there from the ESC. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, what was my other note on here? I do have some wiring looms to wire up this morning and solder up this morning. Uh, I could just use crappy Y leads and extensions and things like that. But to be frankly honest, I've gone this far to put twisted uh, cables in. So that's what I'm going to continue doing. And a little note is I'm just looking at me office drawers and I and, oh there it is one of the not cheap investments uh, for the hobby was one of those a label maker so that's something else which I'll be doing as well I will be printing off some little labels uh, to go on the wires so that if I ever have a brain fart on the flight line uh, is that I know which wires are which I don't really like there. It's really straightforward. Or you could, of course, just use a bit of masking tape and a Sharpie or a Biro, uh, and that would also work as well. So I think someone was off. So Jeff, cheerios. Uh, so yeah, that's the Clouds XUAV. Uh, it needs another two hours before we for just for soldering up before we can get ready uh, for flying. Uh, we'll just get ready for testing, should I say? I'm not. See, I'm not expecting any unexpected. Uh, things with this model now. It's a VTAL, so I can copy my Mini Talon setup uh, and put that onto the Vector. Um, it should all be straightforward. Uh, from here on in, it's just a couple of solder joints and just getting all the wiring in there nice and neatly. Bit of Velcro in the middle. Uh, I do need to hot cut the hole for the FPV camera in the front. I have made a little wooden platform in the very nose, so that needs a little bit of trimming up. Um, but it's all minor stuff from here on in uh, like from here on uh, so happy days And there is a special note around the 48 which is that I've been trying to break the back of this one uh, And as you can see I've been doing I've done a pretty good job so far 
just a few fiddly bits to go and then we can get it to flight worthiness. And the reason why uh, I'm trying to do that is because uh, Friday is a flying day uh, and we'll go out and we'll get a maiden. So, and yeah, to be frankly honest, you know, you you all know that I've got that big 48 wing from Team Legit here. Uh, that one is just gonna be a complete piece of piss in comparison. Because all well, the electronics are all on the top. Vroom, 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 vroom. Job done and off we go. Uh, it's gonna be a million times uh, easier uh, than this big light white lump of foam. It's been quite a challenge to get these things together. But on the flip side, that will now be my first twin uh, motor model. So who knows what's gonna happen? Cool beans, I'm just looking at the comments. Uh, if I have missed any questions which you have seen in the comments section, uh, please do, or if you have any questions, please do ask right now, because uh, I am gonna go and wrap up in a few moments time. I'm just gonna pause for, for a quick cuppa. And remember, if you are watching the recorded version and if you have any, any questions about anything which we've been uncovered today, you can ask in the comments section uh, underneath this video. Also, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, underneath this video, there's my name. It says Matthew Ogborn with a red button. Click on the red button. And then next to that, there's a little bell icon. Click on that and you'll get notified uh, the second the next episode has been released. Uh, and also, a shameless plug, for the Facebook group, uh, both of these topics, which we've just been discussing today, have both been posted in the Facebook group. Uh, the link to the Facebook group is down below uh, in the video description. Just hit the join button on the right hand side and you can literally join 400 plus other crazy pilots like me and you over on Facebook. Just think of the Facebook group as the after party to the RC coffee chat. So on that note, Alan, you're taking your C1 Chaser. I saw the photo on the Facebook group this morning. If you see one Chaser, you had turned that kitchen into a man's workstation. Good boy, good, good man, good man. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Remember the C1 Chaser, if you put a big flight battery in it, loads of throttle on the launch and a bloody good lob. And I mean a bloody good lob. That's why I broke my motor mount is because I didn't give it enough welly. Um, and Dave actually did give it a bloody good lot, but we just didn't have enough throttle down to get the speed going up, and she really did duck down and sag her bottom down, and we scuffed the ground, and that was the end uh, for the motor mate. Bit of a pity. Um, uh, Johnny says, Matt, I'm replacing the 48 with a 50-inch wing. Johnny, there's only two inches in it. It's going to be epically big anyway. Uh, it's, yeah. It's monstrous, and we can get we can run two two big battery packs in the front, or just one big one. I know you were running uh, a big uh, six thousand four S battery pack in the, in the nose of your uh, uh, forty eight. Uh, for me, I, rather than buying separate batteries, I'm gonna try and reuse what I've got here. So I will be running two fifty two hundreds. Whether they're both connected up at the same time is a different matter, but just to get some of that weight up the front, and that's. The, it, it, I'm really looking forward to that one. I am gonna put a vector in it, but to be frankly honest, I am a bit 50-50 whether it's gonna need it, to be honest. Um, although that said, knowing the current current con consumption, I've got to spit my words out, uh, knowing how much more flight time I've got and the other display pieces with the vector, that would be handy. And again, I can always save the details as profiles here for the vector and then load them up before I go out flying the next day. Uh, it only takes a few minutes to do that. Uh, so really straightforward. But yeah, 50 inch wing, that's gonna be mad. That 48 is massive, absolutely massive. Uh, and I'm personally looking forward to that one being the camera ship so that I can take, I can fly a flying wing to take more video footage of flying wings. Happy days, happy days. So on that note, for myself, Matt, it is time for me to make a move. Just to quickly recap what we've covered today in today's RC Coffee Chat. Um, IC versus electric. That was a vote which we had yesterday in the Facebook group. If you've got any comments on that, please do let us know. Uh, and I, I personally, I've got nothing to buy. Uh, I personally like uh, electric, but there's nothing quite like the sound of uh, an IC model ripping the sky a new one. There's nothing wrong with that. 
in my book. I just, well, I do own two of those models and they are scheduled to go in the cement mixer, but that's a different topic and it's no, and it's not aimed at IC, I hasten to add. And then you heard us, heard me discuss the Clouds XUAV. Uh, yeah, quite a few challenges in there. The one major thing right now is we really do an extra, need an extra six inches in that tail. That tail needs to go backwards a bit. Uh, so we end up with a bit more of a lever so we can actually use some of that fuselage space space in the front because at the moment it's just going to be used as thin air, which is a bit of a pity to be frankly honest. Oh, and uh, topic, topic for tomorrow. I might have a working FPV setup down here, but it is all a bit ropey. I'm looking at it and I've just got some resistors just screwed up and stuff like that. Trying to get the resistance down because the uh, uh, diversity receiver, the, the signal output is just too high uh, for the uh, USB input uh, device. Big hat tip to Andrew Heady 2008. Um, I'm dropping one by yesterday. I had two more delivered yesterday as well, so I'm going to give those a whirl too. Uh, in short, live FPV from the flight line is a definite possibility. I can tell you that now. It is going to happen. Uh, I've done a little demo here. It works. Just running a few challenges with the um, AV output signal uh, being a bit, a little bit too strong, should I say, uh, for that device specifically but I have some other devices I ordered two two more from Amazon I've got for that other one which I showed in the video yesterday uh, that's on the way to me from eBay so we will find a combination which works really really well um, but in essence it does work uh, so look out for some live FPV sessions uh, in the very very near future uh, dang this stupid password uh, Actually, uh, if you do check my YouTube channel, I do have an introduction to the Eagle Tree Vector. I have part two, which is being edited, I think, question mark, maybe, uh, on there. Uh, I, yeah, my, it was my intention to run a little Vector series uh, and to then do a setup in the Mini Talon, but as many of you know, the Mini Talon's already flying, so I might have to go do like a retrospective uh, setup in install uh, on there. And our Wombat has a wider speed envelope, so it's more stable for it. Oh, the Wombat. The Wombat has got 1400 kV sunny sky with a 7x4 or 5 prop on the back. And that will be taken out on Friday for a damn good spanking. Uh, whether we are on board live with the Wombat on Friday is a whole different topic. Um, I would like to be able to try and do that on Friday. Um, whether that happens or not, again, it really just depends on the weather, whether I fancy take risk in taking a, a laptop and some the iPad down to the flight line uh, and with the chances of it getting wet. So a bit 50-50 on that one right now. Let's have a quick look. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, have you considered latency issue with the conversion in retail? No, not at all. Don't matter. Uh, as long as I can see where I'm going, that's the main point. Uh, so Joe, that is a very good question. Uh, in reality, if th there there is going to be lag on the live video feed, okay, uh, because it needs to be collected by the diversity receiver. We'll have that in my goggles anyway. Then it needs to go into the USB, get converted, go into OBS, and then broadcast out live on YouTube. Of course, there's going to be a lag. Oh, I'm only going to be running it on 3G because I don't have a 4G for the pad. Um, so. Yeah, it's going to be a curious one. We will try it and see what happens. Well, oh, look, if I crash and burn, uh, one way or another, we tried. That's all we can do as pilots as is try. Uh, and on the brighter side, if we manage to go down through, well, we start off from Stu's armpit, go down the home straight, go through Suicide Gate, uh, and then into the ship and into Bulls Deep together, now that is going to be quite experience whether that happens or not first time or with the first attempt nobody knows but I do think there's great legs in this one live FPV from the flight line I do think that's pretty cool I do really do so we'll give that a, a whirl uh, Lauren dentist tomorrow uh, no the dentist I thought was to yesterday uh, and as my lovely assistant which is also my wife uh, is that it's actually next Wednesday so Matt it's quite trippy the mood today so happy days happy days and on that note, I really do need to wrap up today. I need to go make a dent in that clouds uh, so that we can get a flying uh, for Friday. 
And on that note, from myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me for today's RC Coffee Chat. And I shall see you about the same time tomorrow. And on that note, from myself, Matt, cheerios!